number five zero zero seven. Solar calendar date one May year nineteen hundred eighty five. Good evening, citizens of Earth. Citizens of Earth origin or any other planet in the solar system. This is Dr. Harold Lippincott, your space diary commentator. Tonight on your telescreen, we will see and hear firsthand one of man's most momentous space adventures. A boy and girl will go to the moon. Yes, the first of our Earth children will make an unaccompanied lunar voyage from Space Platform 7 direct to the moon. What a great achievement for these two youngsters. What a great honor for these first graduates of the World Junior Interstellar Cadets. The Interstellar Cadets, as you know, are a group of extraordinary children from all over the planet Earth. They are especially gifted and start training at one or several space academies on the home planet. Your commentator was privileged to visit Space Platform 7 last week. And before Cadet Bobby and Cadet Betty went into pre-lunar medical quarantine, I interviewed them. These telememory tapes will introduce you to these two exceptional youngsters. Bob, are you and Betty worried at all about your lunar adventure? Not really, Doctor. We've been thoroughly checked out on our space shuttle craft. And of course, adults have made thousands of such trips. After all these years of training, I suppose it's really a great thrill. It certainly is. Bob, of course, studied 18 months longer than I. Bob, where have you trained? Well, I had calculus and logarithms in elementary school in Washington, USA. Then I spent one year in the Space Flight Center at Houston, USA. Another year in Moscow on advanced power and propulsion systems six months in England at the Academy of Celestial Navigation, and then back to Houston for advanced computer technology. I had just about the same program, except for the fuels and propulsion. The girls <laughs> just don't seem to take to the engineering courses. Well, you kids have spent six months here, 50,000 miles from Earth, on space station number seven. And now you are ready for the final 200,000-mile voyage to the moon. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you doctor. doctor. It is now a few minutes before the cadets leave the quarantine chambers and board their shuttle rocket. Telecontrol, can we have an audio line to launch QC on platform number seven? Can you hear us, QC7? We have cleared you for transmission from quarantine chamber. Dr. Ivanovich, was it really necessary for us and our shuttle rocket to be isolated here for so long? Yes, Bobby. You see, this is the largest working space satellite platform in the system. And when it was built, the components that were rocketed from Earth were not decontaminated. That is why this section was constructed, to make certain that all people and material that stop here for transfer to the moon are completely free of microbes that could possibly destroy our lunar colonies and research centers. Just think, 50,000 miles above Earth and a total trip of 250,000. Professor Lawrence, do you have any last-minute instructions? I see the boarding control light is go. Now, just remember your sequence instructions. Follow the exact routine as we have for months in the shuttle rocket assimilator. And now, our best regards to all our friends at Lunar Central. God bless. Goodbye, Goodbye and, and thanks, thanks to all of you. you. Check one, airlocks. Check two, systems master switch and computer activation.
All go. Check three. Telemetry systems and platform control. All readings to check three indicate go. Request hangar pad ports open for jettison. Ship is clear of platform. 200 meters. 600 meters. 1500 meters. 3000 meters. Shuttle requests clearance for rocket ignitions. Stabilize attitude three degrees. Attitude corrected. Hold. Fire! The launch window must have been perfect. Bobby, we're absolutely on course. I doubt if Lunar Central will have to correct us when we reach the entry corridor. It's fantastic when you think that back in the 1960s, men were just making the first trip in the old Apollos and had to use a lunar module to drop to the surface of the moon. Well, that's what started it all. Those big rockets loaded with such exotic high-power fuels, boosting parts into space, and then scientists and mechanics assembling all those parts into space satellites the size of small towns. Well, the rocket fuels we use today are so light and compact with over 70,000 times the power of those old Apollo fuels. Yet, they were the great space pioneers, the American astronauts, the Russians, and all those that followed. Yes, I don't think boys and girls ever dreamed back then that those old limbs, lunar modules, would be the workhorses of space. They transported the millions of tons of materials it took to build our experimental colonies on the moon. And who would have dreamed that we would have computerized electronic guidance and radio systems to take over after launch that will guide us right on an inner space beam direct to the moon port? And no more hovering for a landing. Simply cleared approach vector and let Lunar Central decelerate us for a landing into the touchdown tube. Isn't it beautiful out here? Look to the left. You can see Earth, Venus, and Mercury. Yes, but to the right, I can only see Mars and Jupiter. Jupiter is so big, I can't see the other planets. Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Even though we're traveling at 23,000 miles per hour, I feel like we're floating. It's wonderful. <sighs> I think I'll take a nap.
Space Cadets have just finished their nap and have but one hour before landing at Lunar Central. Let's switch over to the shuttle rocket. Look, Betty, there's the moon ahead. It looks so big from here, but actually it is only one-fourth as big as Earth. It is only 2,160 miles in diameter. Look, we're passing Mar Quantrilitatis. I'd still rather call it the Sea of Tranquility. And there above it is the Sea of Serenity. And of course, the seas on the moon have no water. They are plains. Look at all those craters and mountains. It must have taken millions of meteorites colliding on the moon's surface to make them. It certainly did. And the theory is still that all the dust on the moon came from those meteorites being pulverized. Isn't it fascinating that the gravity of the moon, as little as it is, is the force that pulls on bodies of water on Earth and creates our tides? From here, you wouldn't think the big mass ahead would revolve around the Earth every 29 and one-half days. Computer shows approach, Vector. Lunar Central. Shuttle 7X to Lunar Central. We read you, 7X. Set all systems for port landing receive. Prepare for entry and landing. Roger, LC Control. Check one, approach. All systems go. All go, landing port receive. Prepare for docking, S7X. Integrity in reception chambers. Air integrity ready. 15 sea level, Earth atmosphere clear to disembark. As you see, they have just left the hangar deck at Lunar Central and have cleared the airlocks into the colony. The crowd of scientists and technicians are going wild. What a space ovation! Dr. Aaron Smith, the station commander, is greeting them. Professor Von Kulo is at his side. Welcome, space cadets. Welcome to the moon. You are the first human beings under the age of 21 to ever travel so far. All people of the solar system congratulate you. Thank you. Thank you for your warm welcome and our special thanks to all the thousands of people on our great planet Earth that have made this voyage a success. And now in celebration of this great occasion we have planned a lunar party. We hope all young people throughout the solar system will join us in celebration of this great day in outer space. <laughs> 